Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're looking at the Springfield Armory St. Victor uh, 308 AR-10 type rifle. Now there's a lot of AR-10 type rifles out there and the prices can range from anywhere from $800 up to $10,000 depending on you, know, you going down to say the prices of Diamondback up to the prices of Knights and you have everything that's in between. Uh, so then you ask yourself, you know, what are the better rifles? I mean, how much do I have to spend to get a good AR-10? And the reality is you don't have to spend a lot. You know, you, when you go down, per, for instance, to the, you know, probably the most cost-effective good rifle that there is, such as the Diamondback, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that rifle. That rifle will do anything anybody else's will. Um, and, but, and then, of course, as you go up, uh, you know, you get more features and you get, different, you know, and whatnot. But um, most of the time when you're buying rifles, you're, you, know, you have your base price. And then, of course, you're going to be spending all your additional money for a new stock, a new forearm grip, a new pistol grip, and your optics and whatnot. So what's a good type of a rifle to buy where you really don't have to put anything into it other than an optic? And this is a really good example of a rifle that you, you can spend, uh, you know, uh, you know $1,500 on and you have basically all the things that you need uh, to get going. Um, you just, of course, you need to get yourself an optic. Uh, this comes with backup sights. Uh, so you already have backup sights. You already have your free-floated barrel. You already have, uh, you know, a, a good quality barrel. And you have most of the improvements uh, that would make a rifle better. Um, Springfield Armory has done quite a bit with their Saint line, uh, coming up with different different types of models. Uh, and they're reasonably priced. Uh, they're not overpriced uh, the way a lot of other ones are. And you do get uh, quite a bit of that. Uh, the fit and finish on this is excellent. There's no wobble between them. The, the, you know, the, the, the anodizing is beautiful. It comes to you scratch-free. Uh, aesthetics are all good. Um, but for you know, for this price, I think you're really looking at a at a at a really nice rifle. So let's start going over some things again. 308 Winchester, uh, five uh, again 308 Winchester 7.62 NATO caliber. Now if you're looking at overall length with the stock closed, as you see here, you're looking at 34.5 inches. You fully extend it, you're looking at 37 uh, and three quarter inches. One of the be major uh, benefits to this rifle is they use the proper receiver extension. This uses a proper M4 full length M4 type. Uh, type buffer rather than utilizing the mil spec type uh, receiver extension which utilizes a shorter buffer. This one uses a proper buffer. Uh, this particular one utilizes an H2 buffer uh, which does which does a lot of excellent things for as far as your recoil and for running bolt carrier bounce. Uh, this is one of the major benefits of having this. Uh, I don't know why more companies don't go for it. Uh, a lot of them want to try to keep you know, part standard with the AR-15, where you're creating a 7.62 rifle. This is not a 5.56 rifle. Sometimes you need to actually use 7.62 parts and, and not worry about the parts compatibility. So you're looking at the, the lower receiver is 7.75 T6 aircraft grade aluminum, which is uh, the same aluminum as used in, in the military specification. You have a BCM uh, gunfighter pistol grip. This is something that uh, I, I don't care for. I don't care for the grip angle of these of the BCMs. I'm much more of a, of a myad person myself. This is a personal preference. Uh, there are people out there who absolutely love this grip. For me, I, I tend to just like the feel of the Magpul myad. It feels better for me. You have the uh, the, the BCM Gunfighter uh, Mod 2 uh, stock on here, which, again, it's a little narrower on here. Uh, it's a little bit harder to use, I think, than many other stocks that are out there. Um, again, I tend, to, I tend to like to go with the LMT type stocks as well as the Magpul stocks, but uh, this is also a very uh, a good high-end stock as well. It's all branded, you know, branded uh, by BCM for Springfield Armory. So we do have a standard mil-spec type safety, standard mil-spec magazine release. Now you're looking at the trigger. The trigger we see we have here is a flat, is, is a flat trigger. Um, this is preferred by some. Uh, it's, it's a different feeling for me just because I'm not used to it but it's a, definitely a nice trigger pull. Now, as we mentioned, the receivers are nice and tight. We'll see when we open this up, but you have a, you have a tension screw in here, which keeps uh, which you adjust to keep these just rock tight. We have a mil-spec type charging handle, uh, upper receiver also manufactured from a uh, 7075 T6 aircraft grade forging. You notice that we do have a forward assist on this one, fire cartridge case deflector. Now the handguard we have on here is also a uh, manufactured by uh, Springfield Armory. We have a 16-inch handguard on here, as you can see, the 16-inch barrel here, and you can see we have our muzzle brake that sticks right out. So you have a full 16-inch handguard, and it's all M-Lock as well. Uh, again, M-Lock is, uh, is the current industry standard. Free float barrel. Again, why do we want a free float barrel? For barrel harmonics, uh, for also when you want to hang accessories off of here. Now, the one thing they probably should have done that they didn't was, as you can see, they got rid of all the rails on top of here. 
Um, they probably should have extended these rails all the way forward just again because you, know, you can utilize different optics. Uh, some optics you have to actually move for, you know, more forward uh, for longer range use. But uh, depending on your optic, for me, utilizing uh, you know this optic here, this Vortex optic, this was just fine. Uh, it worked out uh, very well. On the barrel, we have a 16-inch chromoly vanadium uh, barrel. We have a 1 in 10-inch twist. Now, one of the things that's very nice about this barrel is this is a mid-length gas system. Um, again, a mid-length gas system allows the cartridge case more time to, to contract for easier extraction. Uh, which is a major benefit for any rifle. You're also starting to see in this industry, you're seeing a lot of movement away from the carbon land gas systems on anything from the uh, 14 and a half inch forward. Uh, you're seeing you're seeing going with the midland gas systems. Um, pretty much, uh, if you're under that, you're you know you're 10 and a half inch or you're 11 and a half inch. You're staying with the carbon length. But pretty much everything else, they finally found the industry has finally seen the light that the midland gas system is the way to go. Now they went with a melanite coating on, on all the metal parts. Again, melanite, it's the, current, it's the current industry standard for the commercial market. Uh, the military market still hasn't gone that route, but uh, they, most of the commercial market right now has gone with the, mil, with, a, with the melanite type finish. Another thing that I'm very fond of on this rifle is the gas block. The gas block is drilled and pinned. And those of you who follow my channel know, to me, that is an absolutely big deal. I had one of my viewers who was, who was having a discussion saying that uh, you know, drilling and pinning prevents, uh, it, it, it affects accuracy and whatnot. And uh, you know what? I've never seen that. Uh, most precision rifles I've ever shot had drilled and pinned gas blocks. Um, there are people who claim that, uh, you know, it, it, a properly made gas block, uh, a properly made barrel, it doesn't move forward. Well, unless you're having a dimple in there that prevents it from moving forward with the, you know, utilizing like a dog nose uh, type set screw, um, to me, it's still not what we would consider combat reliable. For as far as uh, a range gun or target gun, I guess it doesn't matter. Because if the rifle does fail you on a range, you just fix it. Uh, but if you're using this thing for self-defense, that's not an issue. And I will still say to this to this day, during the SAS program, when the final two were down between Knights and JP Enterprises, what cost JP Enterprises that, uh, that entire contract was the fact that they didn't drill and pin their gas block. And when they did the endurance testing on the rifle, that gas block moved forward, causing the gun to... Uh, the gun to short stroke, and that was it. Uh, the gun failed, and Knights won the contract. So nobody's going to tell me the fact that it doesn't happen. It does happen, and it's uh, affected a, a major U.S. government contract because a company didn't do it. Uh, and coming from somebody who tests up to 7 to 10 guns a, a month, uh, I have had major manufacturers who've sent me guns I uh, tested, and that did move forward because it wasn't drilled and pinned in place. So for a, a combat-reliable gun, to me, that's a necessity. The rifle for a 308 is not bad for weight. You're looking at seven pounds, eleven ounces. Uh, you're looking at your, you know, some of you, you have AR-15s that weigh more than that. So uh, with the very thin profile of the handguard, uh, the thinner profile of the barrel, you have a very lightweight rifle. Magazine, uh, we have the Magpul P Mag. Now, however, I've tested this. Uh, we did the range testing with several different magazines. Uh, we've looked at things such as, uh, oh, let's say we had out there, we had. DNH Tactical, we had uh, Ultimag, we had some uh, Israeli magazines, we had XMag, we had uh, also some um, Lancer magazines. So we've, we have definitely tested several different uh, magazines in this thing and it worked quite well. So we're going to take this thing apart and take a look at some of the internal parts. As you can see in here, we have a green tensioning screw. And if you look at the hammer and trigger mechanism, we, it's all nickel boron coated, which gives a little, little bit more lubricious feel. Which gives a little bit better of a feel of the trigger uh, when, the, when the metal pieces are sliding against each other. Now we talked a little bit about the buffer. Again, I want to show you what I'm talking about. This is a standard M4 carbine type buffer. The other companies who use mil-spec uh, length receiver extensions in 308s, you're looking at a buffer that's cut basically in half. So you have less uh, resistance, which means you have a rifle that's uh, much higher gassed. We could cause carrier bounce. Uh, it's, the benefits are just not there utilizing that mil-spec gas, to, uh, using that mil-spec receiver extension. This is a much better way to go. Now we're going to take a look at the bolt carrier group. The bolt's, man the bolt's manufactured 9310 steel and it's magnetic particle and proof tested, which means they test it with a proof cartridge. And then they magnetic particle inspect it for stress fractures, which uh, make sure that you have no stress fractures on it when it comes out. 
It's also properly uh, pinned in place. Uh, the carrier key screws, very well made. So we also have a DPMS type pattern uh, of the upper receiver. Again, billet, you have your forward assist. You have uh, the optic I had chosen on here is an Arrowhead by Vortex Optics, which is a, which is a one, two, 10 power optic. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, shooting with Vortex Optics recently, and I have to say I really, really enjoy them. They're very, very well made. Uh, the price is, 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 right, is right there. Um, excellent, uh, excellent lens quality. And standard charging handle. And of course, uh, like, just like any other uh, AR-type rifle, it's, it's a Lego rifle. You can go ahead and get uh, different charging handles on it. You can pull the, the muzzle brake off and, and suppress it. You can do uh, anything that you would want to do with it. But the overall fit and finish of this rifle is excellent. So what we're going to do now is we're take this to the range and we're going to see how it shoots. So we fired over overall 320 rounds. Uh, again, we shot both the targets and at our challenge targets. Again, challenge targets have made it so much more fun for us in the recent days. Uh, those of you who are looking to get uh, some good steel targets, take a look at challenge targets. Uh, our code is SAS to get you 10% uh, off of every target that they have on their on their website. So we we fired uh, 320 rounds. We fired a couple hundred rounds of the SIG 150 grain full metal jacket. Uh, we fired 100 rounds of the, of the SIG 168 grain uh, OTM and 20 rounds of the Black Hills uh, 175 grain OTM. Well, with the exception of the 150 grain full metal jacket, uh, both the SIG 168 and the Black Hills were all sub MOA. Uh, the best group that we got was uh, 0.78 inches uh, at 100 yards, with that was with the Black Hills 175 grain OTM. Uh, reliability was perfect. Uh, you know, recoil, you're looking at a, you know, seven pound rifle, so you do get a little bit more recoil uh, than you do uh, with, you know, a standard heavier weight uh, rifle. But uh, this one here, for as far as accuracy was concerned, we did shoot out 200 yards with it with no problem. This will get you, you know, a good four to 500 yards without a problem for as far as uh, accuracy. For a defense rifle, for a hunting rifle, for uh, a target rifle, um, this, this thing will do everything that you would need. And again, it's a one-shop stop. Um, pretty much everything that you would need other than the optic uh, comes with it. Uh, if this was my rifle, I'd be putting some of the Manta M-Lock segments on here just to keep, keep my hands a little bit uh, cooler. But I would put some 1913 rails up on the front for a bipod. Again, you can put anything you want on here. You can put a flashlight on it, just depending on what use you want for it. But uh, overall fit and finished, very, very nice rifle. Springfield's done some nice work on the AR-10 markets that they come out with uh, their 5.56s and their... Uh, they're 7.62s, but this uh, this rifle here, again, for anybody who's looking for a good starter rifle in 7.62, this would be a very good option. 
I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share.